people who are just as clueless as you are. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. So another interpretation we got are from the descendants of Seth and Cain. Now, mm. what do you know about Seth and Cain? What do you remember? I feel like I remember Cain and Abel the most. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Cain killed Abel. You're right. Right. And that was the first, like... Murder. Mm-hmm. Like, first murderous sin or something. Which didn't make sense, because if there was evil before the flood... This is the first sin after the flood, maybe? I don't remember. Oh, could be. It was, it was a significant sin. I, think, I remember that. I think it was because... Abel was uh, one of God's favorites. Yeah, they were jealous. And yeah, yeah. and then he, you know, Cain yeah. killed him. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was jealous. In other interpretations, Cain, after he killed his brother, mm-hmm. Abel then became a angel. Right. Came back to warn Cain, mm-hmm. and then when Cain died, he became the first demon. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's. Just one of them. Yep, one of the stories. Yep, I remember that one. References to the offspring of Seth rebelling from God and mingling with the daughters of Cain are found from the 2nd century CE onwards in both Christian and Jewish sources. It is also the view expressed in the modern canonical Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. In Ethiopia again. Right. In Henoch 2, verse 1 to 3, it states... And the offspring of Seth, who were upon the holy mount, saw them and loved them. And they told one another, Come, let us choose us daughters from Cain's children. Let us bear children for us. So okay. kind of the same thing. Yeah. In a way. But only Cain's kids. Right. Orthodox Judaism has taken a stance against the idea that Genesis 6 refers to angels or that angels could intermarry with men. A French rabbi named Rashi and Nachmanides, who was a medieval Jewish scholar, followed this. The Biblical Antiquities 3, verse 1 to 3, may also imply that the sons of God were human. Consequently, most Jewish commentaries and translations describe the Nephilim as being from the offsprings of sons of nobles rather than the sons of God or sons of angels. This is also the rendering suggested in the Old Greek Testament and the Sumerian Torah, which reads sons of the rulers, where the Palestinian Targumim reads the son of judges. Mm. So again, a lot of different interpretations. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the son of like royalty before. I've heard that one. Which, again, sons of rulers would make sense because yeah. if they're you know, giants, and they're huge. Yeah, they're ruling us. They're gonna. Yeah, for sure. They pick them, pick yeah. them up. Yeah, <laughs> just pick us up and throw them wherever. That's bullshit. Whatever they want to do, they can do. A hundred foot, four hundred foot tall. Yeah, just twenty six foot tall. Yeah, chucking people. Twelve foot tall. Yeah. 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 For the most part, we didn't have guns. We did not at no. the time. No. No. We had sticks and sharp objects. Right. And it was said these nephilim could also move incredibly fast and were strong and as 450 foot tall people yeah 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 well it's funny because a lot of times giants are depicted as big and slow which is odd to think about right because wouldn't they be just hauling i feel like they'd get where they wanted pretty quick real fast yeah because they can take a lot more steps than or a lot less steps than we would yeah yeah, but a lot of times they're depicted as just, just lumbering, <laughs> yeah. dumb, slow fucking, yeah. Likewise, a long-held view among some Christians is that the sons of God were the formerly righteous descendants of Seth who rebelled while the daughters of man were the unrighteous descendants of Cain and the Nephilim were their offspring. This view, dating to at least the first century CE in Jewish literature, is also found in Christian sources from the 3rd century, if not earlier. Holders of this view have looked for support in Jesus' statement that, quote-unquote, in those days before the flood, humans were marrying and given in marriage. Experimenting. 
Well, Science. There, were, there there weren't a lot of people back then. You had to, right? Well, yeah. I had to procreate. Somehow. I'm sure we gained numbers pretty quick. Like rabbits. Humans are good at growing growing babies. Yeah. Yeah. If if nothing else, we're good at making things and destroying things. Good at boinking. And boinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and being parasites. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing. Some individuals and groups take the view of, of Genesis 6-2 that the angels who fathered the Nephilim referred to certain human males from the lineage of Seth who were called sons of God, probably in reference to their prior covenant with Yahweh. Yahweh. According to these sources, these men had begun to pursue bodily interests and so took wives from the daughters of men, those who were descended from Cain or from any other people who did not worship God. So many different angles to all these stories. But it's all connecting. It's all the same shit, just worded different. Yeah, kinda. There's a lot of different theories, though, too. That's true. As to how they're actually interpreted. In different transcripts and yeah. There's just all too, these other things. too many variables. It's, ins- it's, it's why it's so interesting. It, it also has to do with where you are in the world. Yeah. Because there's Ethiopia... Jewish text, old Greek text, right? New American text, you know? There's so many connections in all these different texts across the world, but there's so many differences, too, in between the connections. And like we said before, it all has to do with translation. Yeah. Everything is... A lot of things are lost in translation. Right. So if, let's say, one view from the Ethiopian you know, Bible itself could be translated into Judaism or vice versa, you're going right. to lose a lot of that. Right. Another, like, interesting thought lane or, you know, view on this, right? So there's all these connections to the stories, right, with all these differences to the stories, right? Yep. yep. There's all these different gods throughout the world, right? Depictions of gods, right? Yeah. What if those gods gods depictions of gods are the different fallen angels in those areas telling the story through their view their (laughs) word it's not unheard of that's for sure right they're twisting the story different ways to wage the war Mm -hmm. isn't that why jerusalem's been at war for however however many fucking years yeah because the holy land sure yeah so that's what they claim it is. Could be a plethora yeah. of shit. Yeah. There's a lot of different theories about where the actual Holy Land is. It's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, according to the Bible, Canaan mm-hmm. is the Holy Land. The land of milk and honey. Yeah. So what is it? I don't know. Which is it? Where is it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is the Holy Land Eden and is Eden still out there? There's different theories as to where Eden is. Again. Yeah, it's possible. It's, there's so many theories. It's so fun. The world is big. We'll never know. Yeah. We may never know. Yeah. I or, do really enjoy the, the fallen angel God theory, though. It's it's a fun connection for me. I do. I, I like that, too, because yeah. it kind of gives like a supernatural vibe to, to right. it just a little bit. Right. But at the same time, it also is not unheard of because look at all the shit we got going on even today right. and throughout the time that we've been alive. Exactly. Written history. That too. Written history. Yeah. Again. And that only goes so far. Yeah. There's so much there's so much more before written history. That we don't know about. Written history is such a tiny fraction yeah. of his, our history. There's like thousands, hundreds of thousands of Millions. years that are lost. Yeah. So many. Because we don't know. Yeah. We We didn't have the... I want to say technology, but it wasn't technology. We maybe, didn't... maybe not. There's theories on that. We Those didn't are have... whole other episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is also the view of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, as supported by their own Gez manuscripts and the Amharic translation of the Ethiopian Bible, where the books of Enoch and Jubilees, counted as canonical by this church, differ from Western academic editions. The Sons of Seth view is also the view presented in a few extra-biblical yet ancient works, including the 6th century Gez work titled The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan, 
in these sources, their offspring of Seth were said to have disobeyed God by breeding with the Canaanites and producing wicked children who were, quote unquote, were all unlike, thus angering God into bringing about the flood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the same but different, yeah. man. Hmm. Again, translations, different translations. Right. Different different views. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, that's true. So here's a quote from the book. Certain wise men of old wrote concerning them and say in their sacred books that angels came down from the heaven and mingled with the daughters of Cain, who bore unto them these giants. But these wise men err in what they say. God forbid them such a thing, that angels who are spirits should be found committing sin with human beings. Never, that cannot be. And if such a thing were of the nature of angels or Satan's that fell, they would not leave one woman on earth undefiled. But many men say that angels came down from heaven and joined themselves to women and had children by them. This cannot be true. But they were children of Seth, who were the children of Adam, that dwelt on the mountain high up while they preserved their virginity their innocence and their glory like angels and were then called angels of God when they transgressed and mingled with the children of Cain and begat children ill-formed men said that angels had come down from heaven and mingled with the daughters of men who bore them giants I had a just a random thought during that was you had asked earlier if they were like what we were talking about the war with Satan right and how they were the fallen angels. Yeah. I think they're just possibly a subsection of fallen angels, right? They're not all the fallen angels. So there's like the seven deadly sins, right? Right. And one of those is lust. Yep. Right? So what if those are just the angels slash demons of lust? Could be. And elsewhere in the world, there was angels who were doing the other nefarious six other deadly sins. So are you these know. still from the 200 Watchers? Yeah, yeah, the Like this, yeah. These 200 Watchers were the lust, right? End up being the lust demons of the Deadly Sins. Which would make sense. Right. And if that's the case, where's other stories of the other, the other Fallen? Maybe they didn't do such yeah. bad things. I mean, things. maybe not, but... I don't knows? know. Yeah. Maybe it was just the Nephilim that spawned the rest of it, you know? That's a... That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good theory. Who knows? Could be. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this whole thing this is whole interesting. Thing's interesting, yeah, for sure. So we have some different arguments from culture and mythology like we, you know, have been having. Mm -hmm. But in the Aramaic culture, the term Nephila refers to the constellation of Orion and Nephilim to the offspring of Orion in mythology. However, the Hebrew-English lexicon notes this as a dubious entomology and, quote-unquote, all very precarious. So a bad translation. It sounds like it. Why are they that say all end all, though? Who knows? Cause they're... Put them in charge. Because they're in the Holy Land? Well, because they're just talking about stars. So they're automatically wrong. Yeah, I don't you know. You know? Yeah. That's what gives me an issue, too, is I don't understand the whole power structure of this Christianity Holy Land stuff. You know, I mean, I do, but I don't, you know. I, I, I do, but I don't also. Yeah. Like, some things make sense, and a lot of things don't. Right. Because there's no right connection. It's more like, yeah, this happened. Deal with it. Yeah. Like, don't ask questions. Right. J.C. Greenfield mentions that it has been proposed that the tale of the Nephilim alluded to in Genesis 6 is based on some of the negative aspects of the sage tradition. The sage in Sumerian mythology were seven legendary culture heroes from before the flood of human descent but possessing extraordinary wisdom from the gods and one of the seven sages, Adapa, who was a Mesopotamian mythical figure who unknowingly refused the gift of immortality, was called the son of Ea, the Babylonian god, despite his human origin. 
Interesting. So God. Or wait. Son of God. Son of God, yeah. Which still in a way is. Kind of. So If the angels are son of God and they had sons of themselves, they're the sons of sons of God. I don't know, right. The grandchildren of God. So, I, But we're the children of God, right? Supposedly. Right. So why wouldn't they be? They're all from his creation. No idea. No clue. Maybe that's just what they... Maybe... That was their way of differentiating? Maybe. Because he they were like creations of him. Yeah. And... If we're going by biblical text, God took the rib of Adam and yep. made Eve, right. and therefore humans were created, right. right? Right. So because he had a hand in creating a human, that's why we're the sons of God, mm. sons and daughters of God. Mm-hmm. And the angels, the creations of God, were just made, not in his image, because we were made in his image. Wasn't everything made in his image? No. If he's the creator. He just created it. In his image. Yes. How creators create in their image. I don't know, man. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) They don't get somebody else's creative artistry images and then do it. They have their own and then create. That's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) I I know. I mean, that's what creation is. Yeah. Yeah, Comes from somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) Fun little side story about Adapa or Adapa. Mm-hmm. So it said he unknowingly refused the gift of immortality. So what happened is that God talked to him and he's like, hey, can you do this for me? This is just a sum- summarization, right? Mm-hmm, hey, mm-hmm. can you do this for me? And he's like, nah, I'm good, man. Thanks. And then God's just like, Bold. well, you ready then. to do this for me? <laughs> Like, well, yeah. well, you're not going to have immortality anymore. And he's yeah. like, oh, man. So moving on, we're going to more scientific facts than yeah. anything. Yeah. So we're going to look at some fossil remains. Not look at, but we're going to read about Discuss. Some, discuss some fossil mm-hmm. remains. Yeah. So some alleged discoveries of the Nephilim remains have been a common source of hoax and misidentification. For instance... In 1577, 1577, that was a while ago. Long time. A series of large bones discovered near Lucerne were interpreted as the bones of a giant about 19 feet tall. In 1786, a Johann Friedrich Blumenbach found out that these remains belonged to, in fact, a mammoth. A Mr. Cotton Mather believed that fossilized leg bones and teeth discovered near New York in 1705 were the remains of Nephilim who perished in the Great Flood, but paleontologists have identified these as mastodon remains. Interesting. Mammoth, mastodon, same same thing, different species. Prehistoric. Right. right. Yeah. Or Well, mammoth, that's Ice Age. Ice Age. Okay. Do I know... I know you got some YouTube video stuff that told me, supposedly. Well, let's hear it. You know. In 2017. Oh, we're starting early? Yeah. Giant remains found in China. These bones were up to six feet and three inches long. The bones themselves. So, like, think of the leg bone, like your femur, being six feet and three inches long. That's taller than me. Yeah, yeah, almost as tall as me. Just one, yeah, just one leg bone, and now just one leg. Put bone. in like your spine and your rest of your leg bones and arm bones. Maybe it was an arm bone. I don't know. Just a bone. Potentially alive five thousand years ago. They also found pottery and like jade items, along with these bones. Oh yeah. So it was like a ceremonial burial. Maybe. Who knows? They're not sure. That's just what they found. Hmm. There's no like, you know, tied to giants, but there's some, there's some big bones, right? Did they do any? Does it say if they did any uh, like comparisons to mammoths or anything like that? No, nah, I didn't say nothing about that. It just huh. said uh, it was it was just like a a list of giant bones found 
just 10 crazy stories of giant bones found in the world. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In India, they found uh, skeletons that were 18 feet tall. A whole skeleton? Yeah. Oh, shit. And Nat Geo was involved on the, like, discovery of it or research of it, I guess. Oh, they got the big boys in on this yeah. one, huh? Yeah. They said it was, I mean, they said it like these are these ones were giants, they said. Wild. Did yeah. It ha- did it have, like, a head and everything? Yeah, full, like, full body. Like, they showed a picture of it, like, laying in a grave, basically. Oh, did that did I have any you know pottery or like a sword maybe with not it? not this one I didn't mention anything about that it was just buried it was just 18 foot tall buried oh, shit. giant yeah yeah insane the footprint of god that one i discussed earlier right. was another interesting one on that list they believe that i i forgot to mention earlier they believe that foot is 3 billion years old that imprint is 3 billion years old they carbon dated it the 3 yeah. billion years ago yeah. yeah holy shit yeah that is old that's incredible how did they just find it 100 years ago i don't know it was in like some side of a mountain somewhere oh yeah which mountain top stuff with the bible is a lot of it right yeah, Mount Hermon. Yeah. Yep. Different. I feel like there's a couple other ones I've heard too. Hmm. Mount Zion, maybe. Oh. Um. Mount Olympus. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's possible. <laughs> um. But yeah, three billion years old. I like it. this is YouTube stuff I've seen, so who knows, you know? But West Virginia, they found eight foot tall giants, like a bunch of them. It, it, we have people who've been on record as being eight foot tall before. I think the tallest human recorded was eight foot eleven, if I remember. About the Guinness, nine feet. Guinness, Guinness World of Records, Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know. He was huge. That's yeah. all I know. I mean, it, we've had it in recorded history. That's not out of possibility, right? Right. But to find a a decent number of them all buried together is a little different. How many were there? There wasn't a specific number. It just said there was quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. I'm going to go with more than two. Yeah. Okay. I would think more than five. Like a mass grave? Yeah, sounds like it. Something like that. Yeah. Hmm. What if the humans rebelled against them and just threw them in a pit? We'll get to more on some stuff like that later. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Jumping ahead. <laughs> if you're enjoying this topic and would like to talk more about it, you can find us at Edible Attitude or at Edible Attitude Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. In Ecuador, there were some remains found, and they have lore there that there was once believed to be a city of giants deep within the Amazon. Oh. Yeah. Who have since died, I guess, but... Uh-huh. Yeah. It's in their lore that once upon a time, there was a city of giants in the Amazon rainforest deep within. Well, there was also assumptions that there was bustling cities. Yeah. Just oh, a, yeah. Uh, just a people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very populated. Yeah. So, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's weird to think about. Right. They could hide really easy in all those trees. Right. Unless they were taller than the trees. True. That's true, too. In Death Valley, California... There was nine foot tall giants believed to be 80,000 years old found with prehistoric animal remain clothing, um, precious items and huge weapons. Like what kind of weapons are we talking about? Like clubs? Like spears and clubs and stuff. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Animal clothing. Yeah. Like fur? Sounds like it. Yeah. Like a vest? Right. Yeah, this was published in San Diego newspaper in 1947, these findings. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, man. Hmm. San Diego. There was supposedly some Mexi- uh, some giant remains found in Mexico that were up to 20 feet tall. Hmm. Yeah. Seems like... Seems like 20 is the magic number. Like between 15 and 20, it seems like 10 to 20. Seems like a good range. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. No 100 foot tall ones, right? Or 450 feet tall ones. Nothing that I've, that was on anything that I seen, no. They're all relatively reasonable giants. That's, that's fair. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's fair. 
supposedly also in Karabi, Thailand, there was a six meter tall or 19 foot six inch uh, giant who was wrapped in remains, but was also wrapped in a giant horned snake skeleton. Horned it, snake yeah, skeleton. Yeah. What the fuck is a horned snake? It was a snake that lived a long time ago. It's a it's a giant snake with like this horn, like you like a rhinoceros horn coming out of its dome piece. That would be terrifying. Yeah, dude. And like the snake was wrapped around this giant, and that's how they found the skeleton. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Could you imagine finding that and you're like, what the fuck is this, dude? That would be <laughs> that insane. That would be wild. Like, can you imagine the battle? The battle to the death there. They both died. Hmm. Where was that from? Thailand. Thailand. Supposedly. They were everywhere. Yeah. Hmm. All over, right? All over the place. So I have two interesting stories of a specific type of giant. Oh, there's different types of giants? Or Nephilims, right? Nephilims or giants. Yeah, supposedly. Like subspecies? Like There's been about? different depictions of them, right? Uh-huh. So this depiction is of a very specific kind, and they are also both found across the world from each other. Like in two different points? Yes. Okay. Um. So this first story happens in America. Where? Nevada. Yeah, I, I fucking bet it would be. <laughs> Goddamn Nevada. Lovelock, Nevada. Specifically oh. Lovelock Cave, Nevada. Just outside of Lovelock. This has to do with the red-haired giants. There's depictions of these red-haired giants throughout history in different cultures and stuff. Are they Scottish? Potentially. They're cannibals. That much Could is be Scottish. consistent in the stories is they're cannibals. Cannibals. <clears throat> right. Red-haired cannibals. Yeah. But in the, the Plute Indian, that is the... Where this story originates from, the Plute Indians, they speak of the Saidukas, or the the red-haired cannibal giants, or the tools they called them. Now I had to look. I had to look up a tool was because I didn't know what a tool was. A tool is a grass-like perennial resembling a spear or a pike. So it's they a... call them tool eaters. Saidukas means tool eaters. That's what it was. That's right. Okay. So tools are these plants plants that look like spears so my thought as to why they called them tool eaters is because they could handle the plutes attempts at throwing spears at them like they could essentially eat or with withstand the the spear attempts oh right they had real thick skin or the spears weren't well, sharp it, enough it's said in their story that these red-haired giants could jump in the air and grab the arrows that were shot at them and shoot them back. That's bullshit! Like, they were incredibly athletic, epic warriors. <laughs> Some goddamn video game shit. Yeah, like, they were, like <laughs> insane stuff, right? <laughs> that sounds awesome. Terrifying to watch, but awesome sounding. This is all within the Plu Indians' lore, like, spoken lore through their, their, their heritage. Oh, Remains were found of giants in Lovelock Cave with items and pottery and things. Like, this is verified found items. How big were they? You know, it didn't cover that. The reasonably big ones. I think they were like the 10 to 20 foot sized ones, like in that okay. range. Like, they were various sizes. They had a, th the Plutes had a three year war with these red haired giants. Oh my God. Because they were just sick of them running the show from what i understand they stood up to them and had a three-year war with them right and wiping them all out and it ended at lovelock cave like a final stand yeah and that's where they finished them off at huh mm -hmm. interesting crazy right must have been a hell of a war three years yeah yeah wipe them all out jump into the air grab the arrow shot at you and shoot it back that's that Fernando Tatis double jump shit. Though. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it was believed that these red-haired giants found in the cave were alive around 1000 BC. Like That's the time that this three-year war might have ended, maybe. Okay. 
So I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah. And that story held up. I mean, not three million years, but yeah, long time ago. Right. This was also in a newspaper. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I paused and read the article from a newspaper clipping is what it appeared to be anyway. Holy crap. Yeah. It was, uh, must have been Nevada or something. Maybe it was California. It was right there too. I don't remember. That might have been another San Diego or San Francisco. It might not have said. But yeah, it was a newspaper clipping with a lot of information about the war and the stuff. Oh, they went deep into it, huh? They yeah, did yeah. Some actual journalism. That's where it was saying about the three-year war. The I paused the video and read it because I was like, what is this? And it was saying about how they are called the tool eaters and they had a three-year war and it ended at the cave and lived a thousand years ago and all that stuff. That's where I found most of it was in that video. The rest of it was just some guy like, yeah, I'm here, man. They found the stuff here and here and yeah. I just got bored of it after that. (laughs) (laughs) I read the synopsis of it at the get-go. It was the interesting part to me. The other story also ties to America. It has to do with U.S. troops. Oh, military. In the year 2002. Not that long ago. Not that long ago. I don't remember when, but there was a there was a story that had come out on the internet and made its way to YouTube and various other resources. I had heard about this story a long time ago. It's of the uh, the giant of Kandahar, it's called. It is also about another red-haired giant. Was he a cannibal? It appears that way. Okay. Probably. Um, we'll, we'll dive into the story. But yeah, so that's where it's like, we got giants cross world here. Red-haired giants cross the world. What's up with that? Mm. You know, how's that? What's going on there? Right. Coincidence? Yeah, who knows? So the giant of Kandahar, right? In 2002, there was an infantry unit that vanished in the mountains of Kandahar without a trace. Just gone. Just gone. Which is pretty unheard of. Right, especially in the military. Units, yeah. Right. If you have any sort of contact, you're supposed to like call it in. Like, if you're getting shot at, you call it in. Like, we're getting shot at. So they're ready to send reinforcements if they need to or right. whatever, you know. So they vanished without a, without a trace. No clue. No radio contact, no nothing. Nothing, just gone. Hmm. Yeah. So the military did what the military does, and they called in their special unit, right, the Green Berets, to go out and search for these this infantry, see what the hell's going on. The Green Berets go to the the area, roughly, of the last known location of this infantry unit. And they're they're scouting about and they're looking about and they're not finding a lot, but they gotta search, they gotta try and find something, right? So they they keep going and they're going up the mountain and they they come to this point and they they see there's a couple different directions to go and they see this really like well developed path, like a goat path or something, and it goes up and around the corner. Sure. And they they just intrigued them and interested them, so they they decided to go that way. Was well, it get up around the corner? They start finding bits and debris of U.S. military equipment, like antennas and busted radio housings and pieces of uniforms Oh, that were of that infantry unit. You know, when they get sent out on these missions, they know what patches they're looking for. What, right, you right. Know, they know all the information they need to identify these soldiers and get the, get the mission complete. So they start finding this stuff. So this locks them into like, oh, shit. We need to get more defensive here and, like, line of sight on angles and Mm -hmm. get guns up and ready to go. So they start tactically moving up this path, and they're checking all their angles and everything. And eventually they get up to this plateau spot, and there's all these different cave openings that come up into this plateau. So it comes up in this large flat spot, and there's all these various cave entrances around them. In this semicircle formation, essentially. Wild. Yeah. Freaky, right? They find a ton more debris along the way and a lot more at this plateau. Like, it's obvious some terrible has happened here. Something right? happened. Yeah. Something happened. And they, they kind of get up to these, the edge of these caves and they're peeking in. They see it's a pretty steep drop off. So, like, let's back out, get defensive positions. We're going to call back figure out what the hell we need to do and what you know what are what's going on and what's happening right 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 right. so they do that this soldier who's who's a green beret the one who actually came forward with this story supposedly through the internet 
and disclosed all this, said as they were set up in their defensive positions, leadership was heading down the mountain, right, to kind of separate, call back, maybe get reception or something. I don't know. They were, they were breaking off to go call back to base. Not too much after they rounded the corner out of sight, this soldier sees something moving in the cave systems, right, in the openings. But he's not sure, so he's kind of looking. And he's checking around to see if anyone else is seeing it. The next thing they all know is there is a giant spear coming out of this system, this these cave mouths, and impales a soldier. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Yeah, Dan. Dan was the name, I'm pretty sure. Dan was dead. Dan died. Yeah. Okay. Dan got impaled. Aw, poor Dan. This giant red-haired creature man monster comes running out of the cave for the spear to retrieve it when they unload into it and kill it so then their leadership obviously hears all this and comes back it's like what the, what the fuck's happening right they're like uh this thing here <laughs> this, <laughs> like, this uh, big ass creature laying on the ground he came out and we had to kill it and dan's dead um so maybe call base now i guess you know so that that's what happened. They they called two choppers out, one for the unit to fly back and one for the, to get the giant back uh to the military base. Which they had trouble getting that the chains and everything under it to fly it back, I guess. And then they got back and you know, when you, you debrief when you get back, mm-hmm. um kind of write everything down as to what happened. So the guys did that and they handed it into their leadership and their le- leadership said they're not accepting that. And they need to rewrite it. So they rewrote it as if it was any standard engagement. And it got put into top secret and locked away until this soldier came out anonymously. He was all shaded and voice augmented and right. stuff. Came out with this story. So what? whatever happened, do you know, did it say whatever happened with the body? To Dan? or Oh, well, the government took it and... Did whatever the government does to things. Experiments. Yeah. As humans do. Yeah. As we've been talking about. Yeah, it's believed that that somehow that giant killed that whole infantry unit and obviously ate them and shredded them to pieces. Holy cow. Yeah, red-haired cannibal giant. Did they ever go into the caves? I don't know. I never heard anything else about that, no. It was just, huh. yeah, that giant. I don't know if they ever went back. I wouldn't. Right, I wouldn't want I'd be to. like, somebody else can go. Yeah. You guys can that's go. That's in your land. I've seen enough. I'm in your land, they're in your land, but that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not liberating you from that shit. That's fucking on you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go to the closest yeah. like town and be like, hey, you guys got a problem, you need to fix it. Prob- they probably know. Oh, maybe. I would imagine. Maybe like, they yeah, said- don't fucking go up there, dude. Why are you guys up there? We're down <laughs> here for a reason. We know not to go up there. Maybe they sacrifice goats or cattle to it. There's all sorts of those stories, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I just find it so interesting. The Nephilim, the giants, giants and possible more recent events. and Same giants in different parts of the world. There could be more. Yeah, I don't know. It's entirely possible. You know, you know I've been called somewhat of a giant during my days of life. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so interested in this giant shit. Are you related to some of them, maybe? Maybe some subconscious shit. Oh, oh. I doubt it. I'm just a human. I'm not a giant giant. I'm just big for an average human. Yeah. I'm no giant. Well, Just some, puny humans have said that. That's not what one of my children call you. Yeah, I know. They call you a giant. Many children call me giant. Yep. Because to them, I am. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird to think about. Isn't it? Just this... Could you imagine just standing there and you're like, what the fuck is that thing? And all of a sudden just, Oop. oh my God, Dan's dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just think you see something and then you really see something. Mm-hmm. Something you ain't never seen before. How, th- how fast do you think he threw that thing? It was whizzing, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Especially if he's, you know, pissed. used to using the amp yeah. pissed. Yeah. yeah. Hawked it. He probably crow hopped it. He's like, they can't see me. I'm just going to... That's what I would do. He had to line it up. Yeah. He's just like... Yeah, he's like, long distance contest through his chest. (laughs) See how far I could throw it through him and the rocks behind him. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. 
poor Dan. Poor Dan. Those are two of the most interesting stories I found. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> they were good ones. Yeah. The three year war and then the secret cave giant. The, yeah. The disappeared military unit. Both of the same red haired quality, huh? Yeah. And five thousand years apart plus, right? No. One thousand BC to two thousand A D. A while. Three thousand years. A while. Three thousand. That's a lot. Three thousand year difference of big red haired cannibal giants. Well. So what's to say they're not still here? That's true. If it was only twenty years ago. Especially living in cave systems, you know. Right. Deep in the jungle of something. There's more cave systems in the U.S. than any other... North America than any other continent. I don't like that. Exactly. That is a weird concept to think yeah. about. And we don't have access to... The majority of, of them? Tens of millions of acres of land, yeah. Yeah. Is that for a reason? Probably. They say it's for our safety. Sure it is. That's what they say. For the safety of the nature and the safety for us. Sure. But it's our land, isn't it? It's taxpayers. No. <laughs> but it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. <laughs> so some pop culture references we have. Uh, like many other religious concepts, sometimes it's used in nowadays mm-hmm. as far as the Nephilim and giants and stuff like that. Yeah. Some examples are that there's a gothic rock band called the Fields of the Nephilim. Oh. Yeah, didn't know that. Cool, cool hey, name. Their their music's pretty cool. I I listen to it. It's like alternative. Nice. There's too many books to name. Like, yeah. Like I I looked up books and it was just a mm-hmm. fucking list. Yep. People's interpretations. In a couple TV series such as the X Files and Supernatural, Nephilim are referenced. There's a few video games that it's referenced in. Diablo. Well, one is Diablo, right? Uh, another one is in Darksiders, but okay. in Darksiders, they're called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Ooh, interesting. So there's only four of them. Okay. And they're the Horsemen, the Four right. Horsemen of the mm-hmm. Apocalypse. That's, yeah. Makes sense. Just tied two different things together. Right. Yeah. In the Devil May Cry series, these games have a common like Nephilim occurrence between them. Uh, they're often described as as offspring from the unholy union between angels and demons. Yeah, heard that before. So instead of humans and angels, it's humans and demons. Well, Seth and Cain. Seth and Cain, yep. Right, human and demon. Or angel and demon. Right. Yeah. In Payday 2, there's several paintings, artifacts, and far-off visual references in the background. Mm. There's also a secret ending to the game that brings in alien technology supposedly left by the Nephilim. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Didn't know that. Huh. And there's also an RPG called Nephilim. It's about powerful elemental entities reincarnating into human beings. The players take the roles of these beings as they adapt to their newly symbiotic existence and learn the secrets behind the veils of it, of obscurity and mysticism, seeking the path toward enlightenment. Sounds like it might be kind of fun. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Fun description. That's all I got. Well, holy shit, man. That was a lot of information. That was nuts. There's so yeah, so much, dude. That was a that was more than I expected, that's for sure. How much did you or did you not enjoy it? Oh, no, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I just am fucking clueless about so many things. <laughs> I just don't know. So many more stories than we were ever led to believe are out there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just don't know. You know, everything is so tied together in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And and like we said, different translations, lost in translation. The variables are insane. Right, but it's all relatively the same. Right. All the words are the same. Yeah. But they're just different. And there's different bits, too, though. It's true. There's a lot of connections, a lot of missed connections. Also true. Yeah. What was your favorite portion or subject of, you know, reading up on this? What what piqued your interest the most? The 450-foot-tall guy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Insanely giant. just... 
that was not really believable. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Who I knows, have no right? idea. Yeah. Nobody will know. Nobody's. Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody will know until Judgment Day. I guess. Maybe then all will be revealed. Maybe we'll find out before then. Yeah. We don't knows? know. Really depends. Right. What was your favorite part? I'd have to say mine was like getting into the genealogy of like Enoch and oh, Abel yeah. to Noah to, you know, Ham's wife and Ham and the genetics of it. And that, that stuff's always kind of piqued me. The generations and the dots. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. how the dots of the stories link in a, in a way, you know? Right. Yeah, just, that part just really fascinated me. It was like, oh, I didn't realize. I knew no, no it's Adam was connected. Yeah, like that I knew, but I didn't realize like, oh, Enoch is connected, and like, oh, that's maybe where the Nephilim continue. You know, like all that just blew my mind. That theory of the wife of Ham carrying the genetics on the boat, and then and the dude hanging off Canaan the boat. Canaan being born and Canaan having all his sons and tribes and right. land and leading to Enoch and everything, yeah. Yeah. It was and all the prophecies and a lot of prophecies. Yeah. Definitely an interesting part that we were never taught. Right. Yeah. So much more I interested in too. I I think I want to get Enoch and read it now. I've been wanting to, I've never done it. But I think this has really pushed me towards, like, I want to do it sooner than later. Really piqued your interest. Yeah, it really piqued me back into it. For sure. So thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, sticking around for part two or coming back for part two. Yeah, for coming back. I hope I hope you enjoyed it and found this as interesting as we did. And let us know if you want more content like this. We appreciate you. We love you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Cody. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast.